very quickly, I want to tell you about the Mary Meacham Underground Railroad site. It is the only nationally recognized underground railroad site in the state of Missouri and west of the Mississippi. May the 21st, 1855, nine slaves belonging to prominent St. Louisans were told by Mary Meacham, a freeborn black woman and the widow of John Barry Meacham, to meet there at the Bissell Ferry Landing at Blue O'Clock in the morning. Now, Blue O'Clock is the deepest part of night. She said that abolitionists from Alton would be bringing a boat down the Mississippi to get them across the river um, through a free black settlement uh, to the Plank Road to Alton. Alton would be their first uh, stop that night, and then they would carry on to Chicago and then across the Great Lakes into Canada. That night, there were nine slaves standing there waiting for the boat. The boat that the, uh, the, that the abolitionists sent was small. It was actually a little skiff. All nine slaves could not get in at one time. So the first five got in, and they were rowed across, and they were told once they reached the Illinois shore to beat feet to the plank road, nobody was going to molest them, and there the wagons would be hidden to take them to Alton. So as the first load reaches the Illinois side, they land, start running like they were told. But what they didn't know is their plan had been found out. The sheriff of St. Louis, some owners and deputies were lying in ambush. And when they landed, the ambush was sprung. They, the sheriff starts shooting at them to trap them by the river. Now what the sheriff didn't know, there were still four slaves watching all of this from the Missouri side. When the events of the night were over, four slaves are recaptured, uh, five slaves are recaptured, four did get away. Now, the five that were on the Illinois side are brought back to Missouri. Now, the five that were recaptured on the Illinois side was a woman, was, one was a woman by the name of Esther. Esther had been, was a maid at the Henry Shaw's downtown mansion. Henry had told her a couple of days before that he had sold her to a cousin of his in Vicksburg, Mississippi, who was already on his way to come and get her. She asked what was going to happen to her children, her two children. He said, you're going alone. She had contacted Mary Meacham, who was probably the instigator of that particular escape. Another slave that brought, was brought back to the Missouri side was a slave male that was owned by Sheriff Maddox himself. And the fifth slave that was brought back from the other side was a slave that was owned by the livery stable owner, a Mr. Levy. Now, when Esther is brought back, she is taken downtown and put in jail, actually in, um, uh, uh, taken to the slave market and put in jail there. The two, ch or two children are taken back out to Henry Shaw's country estate. Now, what's interesting about this as well is of the four slaves who were standing on the Missouri side, two of them were two mulatto males that were owned also by Henry Shaw, but they had escaped from Tower Grove that very night. Now, Tower Grove is the western edge of the city. And so there they were. They had seen what had happened across the river, and they had melted into the night. We know exactly what they look like because Henry Shaw posted runaway notices for them in no surrounding newspapers. One was 16, one was 19. Third person that was standing there uh, that night was a middle-aged woman who was a cook at one of the downtown hotels. They didn't know her name, uh, but they just knew that she was a cook. The fourth person who was standing there, they didn't know anything about because they said that they were waiting for the boat to come. He just kind of magically appeared out of the darkness asking what they were doing there. And they said that they were waiting for a boat to take them across the river. He says, oh, good, me too. Well, when, all, when the four were standing there, saw what was happening, they kind of melted into the night. We know that they were never captured. So this slave escape was only partially successful. It is the only one that we have from the state of Missouri that we have so much documentation. 
We know that Mary Meacham and, um, and another one of her companions was arrested that night. She, because she was the widow of John Barry Meacham, she was not put in jail, but put under house arrest. We do know that she was given a court date, but believe it or not, the record, court record um, uh, for, for that date has been torn out. Uh, so we don't know what the disposition of the case was. So we do know, though, that this case did happen because there's so much um, original uh, uh, documentation on the events of that night. So like Mary Meacham, I want you to be brave, to be strong, and do what's right. 